All right, so a couple of days ago, I got done reading Justice League Power Rangers, and uh, I, I got a few things to talk about. And my thoughts are, it's all right. Granted, it's not as awesome as Godzilla vs. Power Rangers, but still a, a pretty okay story. But hey, let's talk about it. So first things first, the story doesn't pull any punches because as you can see, uh, Angel Grove is gone. And we see the Rangers pretty devastated about it, but Zack, most of all, devastated and blaming himself for it. And Superman shows up to tell Zack to stop blaming himself and that it's not his fault, that this isn't on him and they know who did this. And you're probably wondering how the hell this all started. Well, let's go back 36 hours ago. 36 hours ago, the Rangers are basically about to get ready for their mission. Zack lets his teammates know that he just got into another argument with his parents because of the whole superhero thing and why he can't tell them his secret and so on. And Zordon lets them know that Alpha 5 is missing, which the only thing they had to go on is the fact that Alpha left the command center, but then Zordon lost the signal and he's nowhere to be found, which leads to the Power Rangers going off on a search and rescue mission different worlds in order to find him and Zack winds up finding him in this deep dark cave that doesn't look very suspicious and Alpha is badly hurt. Zack takes him back to the command center and Zordon realizes that something's not right and before he's able to tell Zack to teleport Alpha away, Alpha just explodes. What monster has done this you may be wondering? Well it's Lord Zed and the whole thing was part of his plan to lower the defenses to get into the command center which Zack wasn't about to let that slide so he had to morph up. To which he still gets his ass kicked by the putties, to which Zack gets a bright idea to teleport Zed away from the command center. But little does he know because of that explosion, the teleporter is pretty damaged. Meaning he could be in any dimension, in time and space, or any planet, or it doesn't matter. It doesn't stop Zack though. And after landing in another dimension and fighting putties, he winds up running into Batman himself. To which Zack winds up thinking that it's probably one of Zed's monsters and let's be honest here if you saw Batman and you're from a dimension where you fight monsters that turn into kaiju like every single day of the week you would probably think that he's one of them too. But give Batman some credit he's not really trying to fight the kid he's literally telling the kid straight up like look man you're you're kind of disoriented you're upset and also you might have a concussion I'm just gonna ask you one more time to put down your weapon. And Zack uh, had a rebuttal which pretty much didn't help him in the long run since Batman blocked his attacks and pretty much put him on the hood of the Batmobile. But the rest of the team wind up showing up. It was getting the absolute bat guano kicked. Like you see that crunch right there? I can't tell if that's his ass that's broken or the Batmobile, probably both. And as they're helping Zack, Billy winds up letting the team know that this isn't one of Zed's monster and they winded up being transported to another world. And as he winds up explaining this in mid-sentence, yeah, the, the, the weapons are gone. And the Scarlet Speedster shows up to the party. Kimberly decides to call in the big guns here and Flash decides to do the same and he calls up the Watchtower. To which Kimberly winds up calling her teammates and being like, there's someone up here with us, someone flying. Rocky's like flying in what? And then of course, Superman just shows up. I also love this scene right here where he just politely knocks on the window and tells Kimberly to land her pterodactyl. I don't know why, but that just gets a chuckle out of me every time. Then Green Lantern appears, Flash tells him the entire situation, and he tries to keep the team contained in his green bubble shield. And if you know anything about these teams with attitudes, they're not going down without a fight. So then they call out their own dinosaurs and just open fired on GL. GL winds up getting knocked out of commission, Cyborg winds up joining the fight, and as they continue their battle on the street, to which you know, my inner seven year old self is seen right now and pretty much like getting giddy just looking at this. Flash winds up using his powers to get into the dinosaur without Rocky realizing it and was ready to serve him nothing but hands. Superman stops him while at the same time Kimberly tells the rest of the Rangers that the Justice League can be trusted at which Wonder Woman has this girl wrapped up in the lasso of truth. Where did she come from? How did she get there? I don't know. So after everybody's calmed down a little bit, the Power Rangers decide to tell them the situation. By the way, this interaction here will never not be funny. To which the Rangers explain that they're from another dimension and they can't exactly leave yet. Because as they were hopping to this dimension, they accidentally brought somebody along for the ride. That's someone being Lord Zed, who winds up being captured by some mysterious force and winds up being put into some miniature city. Zed is like, the hell's going on here? Nah, I'm about to check this shit out. And he grows himself to kaiju level to where he just breaks out of there. And of course, it's none other than Brainiac himself. And that's where I'm going to stop it right here because I don't want to spoil the rest of it. 
and there's a lot that goes on in this book. But overall, I think this book is a really solid read. It definitely feels more like a Power Rangers special than anything. My only gripe is that the story is not really all that engaging and the characters aren't really all that fleshed out. But overall, if you're a fan of both the Justice League, the Power Rangers, and the fights that go on in the show, then yeah, this is definitely something that's gonna be right up your alley. Now, would I go as far as to say that this is better than Godzilla vs. Power Rangers? Hell no. But is it a fun read? Absolutely. I just expected a little bit more, you know? But the seven-year-old in me is definitely fine with this. But anyway, guys, I want to hear from you. Have you read this? And what do you think about it? Better yet, what's your favorite Power Rangers crossover? Whatever it is, leave it down in the comments below. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.